Richard Mille watches are expensive, no secret. But the watches I'm about to bring up on the screen are seven of the most expensive watches that Richard Mille has to offer. Let me put it to this way. The top 1% of the richest people of the top 1% think twice about buying these watches. According to the Morgan Stanley Report 2023, Richard Mille's turnover was $1.77 billion, with an estimated 5,600 watches sold. Get the average, $275,000 per watch. That's an insane average. There's no watch company out there that can have that type of average on a single watch sold. So let's jump into it. I'm going to go back to 2012, and I'm going to start with the OG Sapphire Turbion. Again, the case was made from a solid block of crystal, and that's an amazing feat in its own. Three-part case, front, back, sides, milled from a single piece of crystal. The margin of error on that is just insane. I wonder how many cases they actually cracked before they were able to actually put a single watch together. It was a limited edition of five pieces made to celebrate the 10-year relationship with Felipe Massa and Richard Mille. The retail back then was, I'm gonna say, somewhere in the low ones. But this was at a time where Richard Mille wasn't that hot, and believe it or not, the first time I got my hands on an RM56, I ended up selling the watch for roughly about 900,000 in trade, actually below its retail value. But we know as the market moved, things quickly changed for Richard Mille. And let's jump to the next guy, the 5601. They came out literally the following year. They took the whole thing to the next level. Outside of the full crystal case, what did they do? They make the base plate, the bridges, and a third wheel, also in full sapphire. Again, limited to five pieces once again. That sticker price came in at $1.95 million. At a later time, they came out with some colorful ones. Most notably, you saw Jay-Z wearing a blue one. Shaboy! The blueprint. There was a green sapphire version of that and Jay Balvin's brown sapphire version of the 5601. Uh, the piece uniques, there's really no price of them. And I'll tell you like this, uh, on a secondary, I know of a blue and a green and a brown that sold to the tune of five million bucks, yes. And I know this because we sold two of them. So following the 5601, what's the next logical thing was? The 5602. And they kept all the sapphire. They updated it with that groundbreaking cabled movement where literally the movement is held by cable, similar to what you saw in the Rafael Nadal Turbion 2701, which we'll talk about later. $2.02 million price tag on this item. And ooh, is this thing just unbelievably, oh. Also in 2012, they debuted what's called the Skull series, which was a Skull Turbion. Now, contrary to all belief, the Skull wasn't just decorative. The Skulls and Bone sculpture was actually part of the movement. Parts of the Skull serve as a base plate and the bridges where the upper and the lower Skulls Joe hold the Turbion Cage Ruby. And the back of the head is the movement center bridge. And peeking behind the Skull are four bones, which are in fact four bridges that connect the movement to the case. Originally, they released this in a series of 21 pieces and the retail price tag was $500,000. We have sold the Skull Turbions, depending on their variations, anywhere from a million to two million bucks, just to put that in perspective. Of course, in Richard Mille fashion, other series of the Skull watch has joined the lineup to, once again, include the Crystal version. Retail around the $2 million price range and on the market, they were anywhere from four to $5 million. And what you see on the screen is the 5204 Blue Sapphire. Absolutely ridiculously amazing looking watch. They are ridiculously expensive, don't get me wrong, but the horology is still there. The 5205 was the Pharrell watch that everybody raved about. And that featured an astronaut instead of a skull. Again, same type of horology. The tie between Pharrell and Richard Mille was a big to-do. People respect Pharrell in many industries, if you will, as a pop icon, as an artist, as a designer. Uh, a lot of facets to that man and a lot of achievements behind him. And the watch was a fun take on the skull. The skull is a little bit dark way. The way they displayed the astronaut made this watch a bit more fun, a bit more relatable to Pharrell, if you will. This thing was crafted from a single piece of hand engraved red gold. Uh, it depicts the view of surface of Mars with Earth in the background, and the turbine peeks out from a cutout on the astronaut suits. They made 30 of these. Original retail price was $969. And of course, as we saw later in the market, that watch was way over its MSRP, trading at about that 2.2 to 2.4 price range. The craziest secondary market price yet realized for 52 was the 6.5 million foot piece unique known as the RM5201 Benitas Benitantrum. Benitas Benitantum. Sure, I mangled that, but we'll talk about that later in the show. Let's talk about the smiley. All right, talk about a fun watch. Talk about not being afraid of doing something that's just 
you know, a bit different, a bit childish, if you will. Not something that goes with the sophistication of what's inside the watch. So 2022, this is when they released the Smiley, which had more doodles than, you know, probably a child's coloring book, if you will. The star of the show, obviously, is the Smiley, the iconic image drawn by Franklin Lufrani just over 50 years ago, crafted in yellow gold. 30 pieces limited, $1.2 million list. Again, something that traded a double list and then some. As if a child had a hand in designing this, but this is what Richard Mille is all about. They were never afraid to do something crazy. Like I look at this watch and it reminds me of the candy collection that they came out with, with all kinds of candies and colorful pastel colors everywhere for ladies and RM16 and the 07 and the 37. People are like, oh my God, who the hell is gonna buy that? They sold out and like instantly when they came out. So did this, by the way. And of course, the next we're gonna talk about the plate. I dubbed it the plate. I don't know if I'm the first one that called it a plate, but that's the RM88. Just when Bulgari thought they had the thinnest watch in the world, Richard Mille said, hold my beer, and they came out with the RM88 that retailed for $1.888888 million, oddly enough. This thing came out almost three years ago. It came out back in 2022, and I've yet to get my hands on one. I've yet to physically buy one, sell one, or actually even physically see one. And while the entire internet spent time making fun of that and every meme under the sun went, went around it, I still can't get my hands on one and I don't know of one in the market. It's funny because they're making 150 of these, but from what I understand, they were all long spoken for before they even hit the shelves. And last but not least, the rock and roller. Rock and roll! The RM66, one of the more recent additions to the lineup when it comes to the ultra expensive Richard Meals, this thing has a red gold skeletonized hand throwing the devil's horn sign. I feel like they missed an opportunity to name it the 666, you know, for the devil, etc. but I don't think that would actually fly. But I think they achieved the message with just making it an RM66. Now this thing is encased inside a carbon TPT to no case, produced 50 of the rock and roll watch with a retail price of 1,095,000. I'm not sure there's 50 rock stars still alive today to buy them, but I do know that they are trading way over $2 million. So same fate as pretty much every single limited edition. RM would talk to to date, which moves me to one of the most famous collaborations of all times between watches and an individual, and that would be the Rafael Nadal. And I'm starting at the top. I'm starting with the latest, which is the 2705 Nadal, right? Now these things, and I'll quickly run through the older ones because every single one of them trades over its original ticket price, obviously. But the 05 introduced just now in 2024, there are 10 in total made. Now, of course, when it comes to Nadal watches, it's all about being extremely light, having the ability to play tennis in them, with, withstand all kinds of shock that comes from hitting a tennis ball. I don't know what kind of forces that generates, but it's a lot. It's also not very cheap. Comes in at a retail price of 1,150,000, and I couldn't really tell you at this very moment what the market price is, because I've yet to see one on the market, at least personally. I'm sure there's some out there already, and if they are, I'm sure they're trading at 2X when it comes to one of these. And mind you, again, limited to 50 pieces, not a small limited edition. If you notice, as we're going through the video, you know, the ultra expensive stuff started pretty exclusive of an edition of five, but they quickly realized there's a much bigger market out to that and they took advantage of it because when they went from five to 150, they still all sold out and they're still all trading over list and you still cannot get one. I'm gonna throw the other guys up on the screen. Obviously, the baby in the dollars, we call it RM27, which retailed at 500,000 out of the gate. In fact, I remember it was 472 Swiss francs. I actually bought one at a discount when they first came out and I sold it at a discount. Of course, I wish I held on to it because this watch is hovering around that million dollar price range now. Moving on to the 2701, two, three, four, etc. All those retail prices that you see up there are pretty much 2XM as a rule of thumb. And this is what you're gonna find these watches out there for. A lot of arguing on the new 2705 in terms of, in general, it doesn't have the same feel as some of the other ones, in fact, uh, my favorite one is going to be the 04 because that literally mimics a tennis racket, but yet all the other ones sort of had the same look and feel to one of the most talked about brands out there in the world. And last, I'm gonna finish this off with the Vanitas RM5201 that I mentioned that sold for $6.9 million at Antiquorum back in 2022. It was the highest official price of a Richard Mille sold yet. I don't know of a Richard Mille that sold for more than $6.9 million. Uh, I definitely didn't sell one for over four and a half million dollars. Definitely impressive. And if we look at this watch, it is the Sapphire Skull. I think this was a combination of peak of the market, peak of the watch market, of COVID peak, if you will, as well as the fact that this is a Sapphire Turb 
and it's a skull turb. All the desirable pieces were in place, and I think that's the reason why this watch fetched this much. So would this watch sell for $6.9 million today? Probably not. I would probably say today it fetches around that $4 million price range as all the other Sapphire Turbines have in the past. People have often asked me, money was no object, uh, what watches would you go with? I first say the Patek Philippe uh, grand complication, the granddaddy of them all. And not the Grandmaster Chime, I go with the Sky Moon Turbion. If you want to go from a traditional aspects of uh, watchmaking and innovation, et cetera, et cetera. And the second brand I always go to is Richard Mille. And the ultimate would be for me, and this is a regret till this day, is that I didn't hold on to that very first RM56 Sapphire. Those would be the two watches that I would go with if money is no object. In closing, I could go to cheesy route and say, if you don't understand the price of something, it's probably not for you, but that's just a cheesy way of saying things. What I will say is that, A, obviously this isn't for everyone due to the fact that it's price prohibitive. But for those that could afford this watch, I really urge to look at the overall. Look at the brand in its own. Look at the brand from its inception, where it started and where it is today. And you don't necessarily have to be influenced by the who's who's wearing these watches. You can certainly start to get a better understanding as you start to go through the horological innovation the company has gone through, what it does, what it takes to make one of these pieces. But at the end of the day, keep in mind, and I've said this multiple times, there's nothing wrong with a little flex. And when it comes to flex, and it comes to Richard Mille, those go hand in hand, and there's really nothing out there that's more of a flex than a crystal Richard Mille, for example, as I mentioned earlier. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.